Good evening, everyone. Good evening, class of 2023, students and parents. Welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to see you in person. I'm Jeanette Alomia, the District Director of Guidance and Testing um, for, you know, uh, for the department, for the Guidance Department. And I, again, I'm so excited and elated to see all of you here. Um, I tell you, it's been a ride for all of us, right? Um, and so we're gonna give you a great comprehensive presentation. You're in for a treat. We're either gonna get you excited, moved, or overwhelm you. Um, so we will be uh, conducting um, a presentation about the college admissions process. And so any questions we will have, we will have the, a Q&A at the end. And so I am a parent of two students, right, of two high school students. I have a 16-year-old, a junior, and a um, super senior, which is uh, my life skills student. So we have in our family um, a great opportunities, great journeys that we can share with regards to the college, but also the career exploration process. And although we are very college focused and that's, you know, we are pushing and uh, encouraging all students to aim high and uh, apply to a higher ed institutions, we're here also to speak to all students that may have other options, right? Like uh, vocational, trade school, apprenticeship, et cetera. So we'll We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, so on the agenda, we did this, <laughs> we did the welcome and an introduction. Also, I wanted to uh, share that we are recording tonight's event and we will be posting the uh, recording on the YouTube channel. So for those of you who may have questions or miss something, you can always you know, uh, do a replay. Of, the, uh, of tonight's presentation and for those who uh, fortunately missed uh, the, uh, the event because of you know, other commitments, the uh, presentation as well as the PowerPoint will be posted on the YouTube but also on the uh, guidance website and all of our online platforms. Um, I will also introduce uh, later on uh, Mrs. Walsh, our college counselor. Um, our infamous and amazing counselor who helps all students with their post-secondary planning. We're gonna talk about, talking about that, we're gonna talk about what it's like, what does that look like, post-secondary planning here um, in Huntington. Uh, we're gonna also talk about student responsibilities. I see a lot of uh, students in, in the, in the uh, audience, so we will be talking about the uh, expectations that we have of students as they are seniors. I can't believe that. It's been four years, you guys came in four years ago um, with a lot of like hopes and goals and, and now you are ready to tackle the college application process and move on to college. Um, and so we will be discussing the services that the college office provides as well as the, our online web-based tool called Naviance. Um, we will talk about the college admissions criteria and procedures financial aid and scholarships, um, as well as special considerations. And at the end, we will have a question and answer section. And so with the impact of COVID, the college admissions process ha looks differently than uh, 2019. Uh, we have colleges that do mandate uh, vaccination in order for students to live on campus or study in person. And so there is a lot of new um, uh, COVID-19 related uh, response when it comes to the colleges. We also have a lot of colleges, over 500 uh, universities, institutions that are now test optional. So we're gonna also delve into that, whether a student should be taking their, their SAT, ACT, we're definitely gonna be looking at that. You know, we have about uh, almost 85% of our student body of class of 2022 that uh, is currently attending two and four year universities. Others are going to, uh, they're taking a gap year, military employment and trade school. And so we, every year, uh, our goal is to, again, expose everyone to the opportunity that they can go to a two or four year school. And if that's not, not the route that the student or a parent decides to take, then that's okay. We are going along with you. You lead the way. Um, all students have options, so just 
please know and understand that you all have options. You have a criteria, don't forget that, that colleges are looking at you with a closed eye, but also you should have a criteria as to where you want to attend next year. Um, it's not where you go, but what you do when you get there. So we encourage all students, just like we do when uh, you start in ninth grade, to get involved, right? Extracurricular activities and volunteer. So we do encourage you to continue that, those leadership roles that you carry uh, throughout high school to continue that in college. Um, so everyone's path is unique. Uh, one uh, word of advice is, as a parent, <laughs> I, can, I have witnessed this, please do not compare yourself with another person's journey or destination or why the, the, the student um, received admission um, to the same institution prior to, to me. So try not to compare yourself as you go through the process. It is a very customized, unique process. So your experience uh, will be completely like your fingerprint, unique. Um, and I'm also talking to those parents with older students that, are, that have students in college as we speak. You will notice that, yes, the college admissions process and the whole financial aid process is quite familiar to you and similar. However, again, the journey is unique and the journey is different than your older uh, child. So organizing, we're going to talk about organizing post-secondary planning into steps. Um, I, we feel that if you are organized, you write things down, whether it's through a Google document, you know, document, it doesn't have to be your conventional paper and pen, but if you carry a calendar and also keep a things to do list, what we advise you is to be organized and just take some time to uh, just think about your ne next uh, move. Um, otherwise, you're gonna get really stressed out about where you need to be. And Mrs. Walsh will be talking to you about, again, the services and what she will be uh, doing with all of your, your, your students. I know that Mrs. Walsh already started pushing into the English classes to talk about, um, again, the college office, services, opportunities, making appointments, so I know so some of you, if not a lot of you, already have uh, made those appointments, so we will give you a QR code for that as well to make an appointment. And so our role as the guidance team, the guidance department, whether it is your own, you're never going to lose your counselor, by the way. So if you have Mrs. Brunoni, Mr. Lashin, Ms. Marcella, and Ms. Hernandez, those are still your counselors. Uh, they will be guiding you as well and collaborating. They will be collaborating with Mrs. Walsh, who will be uh, leading the way in terms of the college admissions process and all the information. So with regards to the student responsibilities, what I ask is for every uh, student is to own the process. And I know that as a director of guidance, it's so hard for me to allow my junior to own the process. I'm guilty of that. So I have a big mouth and a lot of information, access to a lot of information. And so sometimes I have to step back and say, this is his, right? This is his journey, his process. So what I encourage is uh, for students to own the process, take the lead, um, and just shine. Shine through those uh, essays. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, one of the things as you are going through the next few days, weeks, and maybe months, reflect on uh, all of these uh, points. Um, so have you verified the accuracy of your transcript? I have been updating and posting transcripts on the portal um, weekly since uh, the first day of school. I will send another communication with regards to you doing one final review of your transcript to make sure that it's pristine, ready to go, so that we can send it to the colleges. But we, I will also include the transcript approval form, and we'll talk more about that. Um, also, have you uh, consider, you know, in terms of the region's uh, exemptions and for those that are getting a special appeals and another communication will be sent by me about the special appeals with when it comes to uh, students earning a region's score of 50 to 64 but pass the course. 
um, is that it's is that that essay that special appeals that's going to appear on your transcript will that affect uh, your uh, chances of getting into the colleges and again we will be talking more about that but essentially it is up to the college and their philosophy as to how they view that special appeals we can uh, talk definitely more about that um, at after the uh, the program if you have specific questions about the regions exams special appeals um, so students, uh, did you, are you taking the most rigorous courses that you can manage, that you can take? Um, if you're uh, an artist, are you taking the AP2D art and design class? Or if you're more of a humanities, are you challenging yourself by getting the capstone diploma with the AP seminar and AP research, etc.? So we encourage students to um, take the most rigorous classes because, and do well, right, and, and receive all the, the support, and do well so that you can show colleges that you are, you remain competitive and that you can handle the rigor of the, uh, the curriculum at that specific college that you will be going or that you wish to go. Um, so what steps have you taken to research schools and complete the application um, on time? So I know we had, um, Mrs. Walsh led a, uh, our Common App Boot Camp uh, completion, uh, Common App Completion Boot Camp um, last month, and we had over 80 students, 80 seniors, who sacrificed time, their summer day, beautiful <laughs> sunny su summer days, and started their Common Application. And I just want to commend everyone that, that started the Common Application, and I just wanted to give you a, a bit of an applause. It is, it is a huge undertaking, starting is actually the, um, um, most of the battle, like getting, getting yourself started, that's the challenge. So are you taking the most rigorous academic program? What steps have you taken to research schools and complete application? Have you visited schools, student athletes? Have you been going to ID camps uh, and, and, and tried out to that specific college, uh, college's team? Have you started working on your college essay? Have you uh, contemplated on which prompt or essay topic you will be writing about? Um, also, going back to student athletes, are you, have you applied to the NCAA uh, eligibility process and gone to the NCAA website? Um, in terms of communicate and monitor, we uh, encourage all students and parents to join the class of 2023 Remind page. So here's the code is at Mrs. Brunone. You don't have to be Mrs. Brunone's student to join the Remind page. You will get a plethora of notifications and information with regards to the college admissions process, events, and scholarship opportunity. We do have a robust scholarship program here where many of our um, community leaders and organizations in Huntington have donated and uh, want to see students earn uh, money to uh, apply towards their books, tuition, and so I definitely encourage you to see our, and we will talk about that, our newsletter and our notifications through Remind with regards to um, scholarships. Do you know which uh, of the schools you're applying to require a supplemental essay, a second essay? And do you know how to utilize Naviance to request letters of recommendation? Have you thought about those teachers that you will want to uh, ask for a letter of recommendation? Um, also, have you paid attention to your deadlines, like early action deadline or early decision deadline? Um, and when are, when are those? You have deadlines that are fast approaching, November 1st. So, um, Thing, these items are, are just uh, worth reflecting and thinking about. Um, and so you would, uh, we encourage that everyone follows uh, with the college office with all uh, admission decisions. So yes, we do help you with the college admissions process and apply, and, but we really do appreciate what, uh, when you come back to us, especially Mrs. Walsh and our, our beautiful secretary, Ms. Catalano, with the admissions decisions, whether you've been um, uh, accepted or not, or waitlisted. So we definitely need that feedback because we also keep that da data about our kids um, and we incorporate it into our discussions and the counseling sessions with younger students, you know. How many students got into Duke? You know, how many, what was their profile, GPA and test scores, et cetera. So it's very important for you guys to let us know 
and I'm talking to the students, uh, where you got in and where you got waitlisted and where, where you, didn't, you didn't get in. And so I am going to be quiet right now, and I'm going to introduce um, a very resourceful person. She's been in the field for 21 years, um, and she's been working at Hunt Huntington since for 17 years. So I think she knows what she's doing. Um, please help me welcome Bernadette Walsh. I hope you're thinking to yourselves, wow, she looks so young to be doing this for 21 years. I started this before I was married, before I had kids, and now my oldest is 14. My middle daughter is 11, my little one is nine, and boy, I'm sure you remember those days running around like lunatics because my husband's on call right now. <laughs> We've got kids everywhere. Um, but enough about me, I'm really excited to be here in person. We haven't done an event like this in years. I think back to um, the first, or the last time we spoke in person here, the last Senior Parent Night presentation um, was for the kids that were seniors when all of you guys were freshmen. It was a long time ago. And I know myself, I was thinking back then, how are we gonna get through this? What are the next couple of years gonna look like? So I'm so happy to be here again in person welcoming families, um, not only to the auditorium, but to the college office so that we can continue this discussion together. Zoom still works, and if that's some, everybody's you know, comfort level's different, but um, whatever it is that we can do to support and encourage, we are happy to do that. So thanks for the welcome, Ms. Alamia. We're gonna talk tonight about the college application process. We're gonna talk about what I do, what the students are gonna be responsible for, and really how we're gonna pull it all together. Um, I have been pushing into the ELA classes this week. I'll be doing some more push-ins tomorrow and next week. There's quite a lot of senior English classes uh, scheduled. So I've been taking my show on the road for a couple of periods every day and trying to reach every student and let them know that this is, this is a... This is a relationship. We're gonna to work together to make sure that everybody feels supported and encouraged and has the information and the resources that need to go through the search and application process as stress-free as humanly possible. So we have a dedicated college office, which is uh, separate from the guidance suites. I'm down the hallway, right across from the library, and seniors are encouraged to come down at any point with questions, with concerns, to set up appointments, just to swing by and say, hey, Mrs. Walsh, I got into you know Duke. Got in here, got in there. Mrs. Walsh, what's the next step? So we really do have an open door policy, and kids are more than welcome to come down. Um, you can see on the board all of my contact information. I can be reached via email. Uh, parents, guardians, you should know that the Remind Group isn't just for students. This is for you, too. And so if you would like to kind of be in the know with what's going on, I mean, I know I'm a part of the Remind Groups for all my kids, teachers, and coaches, and all that. Just to be on top of what's happening, please join that Remind Group. Um, the college office has a ton of resources um, from uh, still, we've got the, the big binders there and the workbooks, but it's also a great space for students to sit down, take some time out from the day during a study hall and do some work. We've got the computers there, but obviously the students have their Chromebooks. They can come on in and just take a breather, kind of regroup, work on their college essay, start reaching out to some colleges, sending out a few emails. That's the place to do it. We've got information there about uh, virtual college visits, college fairs, scholarships. One of the items that you picked up today called the Friday Flyer. This is posted every Friday on the district website. And if you flip through, you'll see lots of information about upcoming standardized testing, upcoming virtual college visits, college fairs, scholarship opportunities, grants, financial aid, you name it. Everything post-secondary planning um, is published on that Friday Flyer, which we post on the district website every Friday. We've got information down in the college office, office about NCAA, of course, about Naviance as well. At this point in the process, students really should be kind of wrapping up their research. And I say that very loosely because the research process 
takes time, there's ebbs and flows, and it could just take one visit to a college for a student to say, yeah, I don't want an urban environment, or that's, that's really for me. Could take a virtual visit for a student to say, yeah, you know, I think I'm gonna add this school to my list now. So research, it, it takes quite a while. And I was talking to the kids in classes this week, um, asking them, does anybody know what would be the day when you actually have to put down your freshman deposit? Okay, you can shout that out, anybody. When do you have to put down your freshman deposit? May 1st, May 1st. So research will go on long after you even apply. Long after you even apply. We are here to help with that. We're here to help narrow down a list of schools. Maybe open up that list of schools. Maybe talk about, do you have enough options on your list of schools? That's what we can do together to make sure that you've got something you feel comfortable with. You know, the goal is really to be able to sit down at your dining room table and say, okay, I've got these acceptances to colleges X, Y, and Z. Which one's right for me? So if you're strategic about where you're applying up front, you'll have a lot of opportunities. That's what we want. So as students are doing their research, please know that all seniors are entitled to five days of excused absences to visit colleges. We want students on campus. You know, now that colleges are opening up more to visitors, try and take advantage of that opportunity. I know it's not so easy to miss classes, uh, especially if you've got a heavy schedule, but I'm sure you can appreciate visiting a college in person feels very different than going online and visiting. That's not to say that virtual visits aren't great opportunities, because they are. But you have five days to use. There's a special form. You can find that in my office or in the college office classroom, which I'll talk about in a second. And we will absolutely give you the day to do that. Come back to school the following day, make up all the work you missed, make up any, any exams that you missed on that day, et cetera. So please take advantage of those. Some students will use them in the fall when they're doing their initial research. Some students will save those days until the spring when many colleges have what they call accepted students day programs. However you want to use them, it's completely up to you. And if you decide you don't want to use them, if you're visiting on weekends and you don't need to, then so be it. So COVID forced me to do things a little bit differently. And being you know, around that time, we weren't in person. It was hard to really communicate. I figured, you know what? Let me get with the times. Let me put together a Google Classroom. So my college office Google Classroom is not like a teacher's classroom. There's no quizzes or tests or grading or anything there, but it's a platform that students have access to with tons of resources. There's guides, there's videos, sort of, sort of how-to things, forms, and whatnot. And students can log on at any point, search through the information, Everything is categorized, so if a student has particular questions about scholarships, upcoming deadlines about uh, financial aid, the list of virtual college admissions reps that are scheduled, you're going to find all of that in the college office classroom. All students were sent an invitation to join the classroom at the middle of August or so, so I'm pretty sure everybody's on there. But students, if you're not, the code is posted right here. You can join that very easily. In the classroom, you want to make sure that you have your notifications turned on, students, okay? Because I'm posting to the stream pretty regularly with updates, kind of important information. Just this morning, I posted, hey, be there tonight for the 12th grade parent night presentation. And because it's, I'm probably not even saying this right, but it's a Google Suite, it means that the things that I update are updated in real time. Hence, the list of virtual college visits. So let's talk about that. Um, we are hosting all of our visits after school hours, which we have found makes it much easier for students to attend these visits and not leave class, miss material, to meet with an admissions counselor. These visits are scheduled every hour on the hour from 3 to 6 p.m. every day, and the list is growing and growing and growing. What students will do is they're going to go on to the college office classroom. They're going to see that list. I do post a list on the stream every week of who's coming in that week as well. Students register through their Naviance accounts. And they will have the opportunity to have a 45-minute session with admissions counselors, ask some questions. And if they prefer to kind of keep their mouth shut and sit kind of on the side, they can listen. 
they could hear about the college, learn a little bit more about the opportunities from the academic level, from the athletic level, from the musical level, from the scholarship point of view, all those different things. The, uh, the students have opportunities to participate in college fairs. We have a college fair that we're hosting here called the Mini College Fair. We haven't held it here in quite a while because of COVID, but we have over 50 colleges coming in on October 18th. That is also in the Friday Flyer. Students will have a chance to come to the cafeteria and meet with admissions counselors one-on-one. -on -one. So we, we aim to help, support, guide students through the research process along with the application process too. Um, Naviance. Naviance is a big part of this process. And you will know Naviance mainly as a way to research colleges, research careers. You'll know it as a way to take some fun interest inventories, kind of get an idea of your personality type and which careers might be a good fit, parlay that into which majors would work with that career, and then which colleges have those majors. So Naviance still has all of that. But Naviance for Seniors takes on another component. And it's through Naviance that some of the big ticket items in your college application will be submitted. So I think everybody knows that a transcript is a big part of a college application. And we'll talk about the other components in a minute. But a transcript in particular is one of the components that's sent to colleges through Naviance. So we need students to make sure they're able to get into their Naviance account. They shouldn't have any trouble because you log in through Clever. So students log in through Clever. Parents and guardians, you have access also. I'm not sure if you've ever had a chance to log into your side of Naviance, but the parent account allows you to kind of ghost in a bit and see what's going on on the student side. Students, your, your mom and dad, they can't add to your list of college, they can't take anything off, but they can really see what's happening. Um, so if any parents or guardians are, are not able to get into your Naviance account, please let me know, please reach out to your counselor, and we can absolutely give you the access codes. But students, you are all through Clever. So everybody should be able to get in. If you're not, do tell us. Naviance really becomes the glue that holds together the application process. Students are going to be able to see through Naviance when their transcripts were sent out, when their letters of recommendation were sent out. Um, so, you know, a long time ago, um, when I went to school and many uh, parents and guardians of you went to college also, you remember that there was a, a big envelope we would mail out and we'd have, to, we'd have our college essay typed out and we'd have the application hand, handwritten in. Well, that's not the case anymore. So everything is sent electronically. We send documents electronically, students send documents electronically, and we'll talk about how that happens also, typically through the common application, but Naviance ties it all together. So it's really crucial that everybody can get in and, and, and utilize that platform. The College Office Google Classroom, the uh, Naviance platform, these are gonna be websites that you are on regularly, students, okay? So just try and get used to this. In terms of college admissions criteria, I'm sure this looks pretty familiar. We have some differences between two-year schools and four-year schools and what they're, what they're looking for and how they're making their admissions decisions. But everybody's looking for a transcript. Everybody wants to know how you're doing in your classes. They want to make sure that you are academically eligible, admissible, that you will be successful academically in their schools. We know that college is more than just going to class, but the primary reason you're there is to learn, so we've got to make sure that those transcripts are in great shape. And so when Mrs. Alamia was speaking before about the transcript approval process, this is a really big, big deal. And I've been encouraging students as I've been going into the English classes this week just to log into the portal, just take a look. Take a look. You don't have to approve your transcript yet. You'll get the directions from Mrs. Alamia shortly. But take a look at your transcript. And if you see something on there that you're not so sure about, maybe it has something to do with one of the COVID exemptions or special appeals, or maybe Maybe you're a senior and you switch your senior schedule and your transcript doesn't reflect that change just yet. You just, just talk to me. Speak with your counselor. Be proactive so that when you are ready to apply, when it is go time, we've got everything nice and clean and ready to go and you can follow Mrs. Alamia's prompts. You can um, double check that transcript, uh, fill out the transcript approval form and you'll be good to go. Standardized test scores, 
Possibly. We've all heard of test optional programs. There are going to be some schools that require tests, SAT, ACT, and some schools that don't. We've got extracurricular activities, the essay, the recommendations, uh, perhaps uh, for finer performing arts students, portfolios or auditions. And then we've got the two-year school requirements of the transcript and possible test scores for uh, placement uh, purposes. So we're going to gather all of these pieces together, and we're going to get these pieces to the colleges together. Certain things I'm responsible for, certain things the students are responsible for. And we're going to submit these materials by the actual deadlines, of course. Many of you have heard of these terms that we have up on the board right now. Regular decision, early action, early decision, single choice early action, rolling admission. I'm saying to the students, listen guys, it's really, really important that you know your colleges backwards, forwards, and inside out. You do not want to miss an application deadline. You don't want to miss an opportunity. You want to make sure you understand what these application options really look like and mean. For the most part, they're pretty straightforward. The only one that's a little bit quirky here is restrictive early action. And so that depends on the colleges that a student applies to, how that actually plays out. But essentially, it's an early action program, which is non-binding, but there are restrictions as to how many or what other types of colleges a student can apply to simultaneously. Not every school will have these five different options. You might apply to one college that has early decision and regular decision. You might apply to another college that has an early action deadline, an early decision deadline, a regular deadline, and a rolling deadline. It depends on the schools you apply to. So organization, like Mrs. Alamia said, is critical. You don't want to miss a deadline. You don't want to miss an opportunity. You can apply to multiple schools through a regular decision plan. Typically, that deadline is January. You can apply to multiple schools through an early action plan if the school has one. And those deadlines range usually anywhere between October 15th at the very early start through November 15th, non-binding. Early decision, this is the binding program. You can only apply to one school in this fashion. And if you get in, you're essentially signing a contract right up front, and I am signing that contract, that if you get in, you will go, and I am not allowed to send out other applications for you once you've been accepted. As he talked about single choice early action, and then rolling admission, which means that there is no deadline. So colleges have different options here, and you really want to be sure that you understand, based on the schools you're applying to, what choices you have. And it will absolutely help you structure the next couple of months if you know what you need to work on first, second, third, fourth, and so on and so forth. We're absolutely going to talk about this when we meet together. So you're not going to just leave here today, guys, and be on your own and have to figure all this out. I'm meeting with students regularly, in groups, of course, but then individually. And so this QR code is um, a code to an appointment request form. And I ask that if you met with me last year, you do not have to fill out that appraising myself packet. But if I didn't meet with you last year, I need you to do that. And seniors, I know you're familiar with this, uh, parents, guardians, this is a packet that I asked the students to fill out to help give me some background on what your child is looking for in their college experience, what their high school experience was like, some background information. The goal is for me to meet with your children and provide them with resources and information so that they can be successful in this application process. So in the packet, I ask about, again, their interests. What are you thinking for in terms of life after high school? Are you thinking about a two-year school or a four-year school? Are you thinking about maybe a, a music major? Are you looking for a college that has a psychology program but a marching band? You know, maybe some specific information so that I can then present you with tools and resources. That packet also helps me help the colleges get to know students. And that's because I will be writing a letter of recommendation for your children. So that packet gives me lots of background. Our conversation, lots of background, so that I can then present students to their colleges. So long story short, if you filled out that packet last year, you don't have to do it again. But everybody, if you'd like to request an appointment, you're going to go onto the college office classroom and fill out the form, or you can just scan the QR code and you're good to go. 
what may be included in a college application? You know, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. We've heard some of these uh, items here before. We need the transcript. Um, we need recommendations. We need um, typically a college essay, a list of activities. Depending on the student, how they're applying, which application type they're using, there might be um, an early decision form that has to be filled out and signed by me. Uh, there might be a mid-year report where a college might ask for first semester grades. So these are all items that we will be discussing individually, uh, but also that you need to keep track of as you're working through your college applications. As I mentioned, Naviance is a huge part of this process. So the items that you see here are going to be submitted through Naviance. The transcript, which I'm going to take care of. Teacher recommendations, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then, again, like I said, early, other relevant college documents like you know, fee waivers, or decision agreements, etc. Now I put on here, uh, under transcripts, it says SRAR. That's self-reported academic record. And this is something that you may or may not come across, but just so you know, if a college asks you to fill out an SRAR, they're asking you to self-report your entire transcript. This is common amongst very big public research universities, and the reason why is it makes the admissions process on their end uh, a bit easier. They're going to be able to print out a transcript on their end that has all the math classes put together, all the science classes put together, et cetera, et cetera. So rather than deciphering through Huntington's transcript and the next student goes to, college, goes to high school in Las Vegas and, and whatnot, very different transcripts. So when a student's self-reporting, that college will then be able to generate transcripts that look, it's the same format. So you may see that, you may not. If you do, it is tedious, but it is also a requirement. So just be on the lookout. Doesn't mean we're not sending out a transcript but the colleges want to see what you're putting down first. Colleges that ask students to self-report the transcripts and, and, and any college that a student ultimately decides to go to will receive a final transcript once students have graduated. So that's another one of my jobs. In early July next year, once you know where you're going to be, I'm going to send out your final transcript indicating that you've graduated. And then for those students that had filled out the SRAR, the college is going to compare them. Make sure that what you actually put on that SRAR is on your transcript, okay? So let's talk a little bit about college application platforms. There are three ways that a student's going to apply to college, and all online. I haven't seen a paper application in years. All online. We've got the coalition application, we've got the common application, and then we have institutional applications. And the coalition application and the common application, these are just you know, simple platforms, multiple colleges participate. Institutional applications would be where you're applying directly to the college or university. So we'll start with coalition. There's about 150 colleges that participate. Uh, they have a common mission. You can see that right here. Uh, 150 is a very small number of colleges. Most students actually don't use the coalition application, but it may be an option when you're looking at your school. So for instance, just as an example, Binghamton University allows students to apply through the coalition application or the common application or the SUNY application. You do what's easier for you. But I haven't seen students use coalition in quite a while. So there might be one or two of you in here, but I don't expect there to be a lot. I do, however, expect the large majority of you to be applying through the common application. And show of hands, students, how many of you have started the common application? Awesome. That's great. It's good to hear. Um, I know that a lot of you were able to attend the workshops that I held in August, but even if you weren't able to, you'll, you'll find, even you know, moms, dads, parents, guardians, that it's not a difficult application, but boy, is it tedious. And there are a lot of little sections to this. The beauty, though, is that you can apply to up to 20 colleges from a sea of 1,000 schools, big schools, small schools, close to home, further away, varying levels of selectivity, all sorts of application deadlines and application fees. But you're essentially filling out this one application, writing one main essay, 
filling out family information once, filling out activity information once, so it's meant to simplify this process. But again, like I said, there are various deadlines and admissions criteria from college to college. The packet that, one of the packets that you received, um, that says common application up on the front, um, this is some helpful information that I've been distributing in the English classes this week that students will need when they're filling out the education section of the Common App. This is where a student says, I, I'm a student at Huntington High School, I started in you know, September 2019, et cetera, et cetera. This is where we're going to, you're going to mention students that you are attending a high school that has a, um, a semester scheduling system, uh, that our GPAs are, are, are based out of uh, 100 points, et cetera. So it's Huntington High School specific information. So you're gonna use this as you're filling that out. And again, you're doing this once. So that's what's really nice about the common application. You students, you have to do what's comfortable for you. And if the majority of your colleges are on the common application, I would apply that way. There's no need for you to apply through the SUNY system if all those schools are on the common application. It's just gonna be a bit easier for you to do it that way. The common application works with Naviance very, very well. And there's a special process, and students have heard me talk about this before, called the Common Application Naviance Account Matching Process. And it essentially allows the two systems to talk to each other and work together. So that we can send materials out for students, so that teachers can send letters of recommendation out seamlessly. But there's a couple of steps that need to uh, be completed in order for that to happen. So, in reference to the next two slides, I'm actually gonna ask you, in the packet, you're gonna see this page right here called a records release form. If you flip over, it says application procedures. So this kind of details this process here about matching Naviance and the common application, how that works. And the first step is going to be to sign what we call the FERPA agreement. Now that stands for Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. And basically this FERPA agreement, when you waive your rights through FERPA, what you're essentially saying to the college is that you haven't tampered with your letters of recommendation. Therefore, you don't need to see them. Therefore, we are waiving our rights to view letters of recommendation, which is an important part of the application process because colleges wanna make sure that teachers haven't had their letters tampered with, <laughs> that teachers have been able to um, put down truthful, accurate information, and so on. So the students are gonna be asked to sign this FERPA agreement right in the common application. It takes two seconds. And the next step would be to actually match the Naviance and common application accounts. And so again, that gets them communicating with each other and talking together. And what we'll eventually see is a list of schools that a student's applying to right on their Naviance account, which is super, super important because remember, it's through Naviance that I'm gonna be sending materials to the colleges, that teachers are sending materials to the college. So we need to be able to see all of those schools listed on the Naviance account. So just a couple of screenshots so you can kind of see what will happen. Once a student matches their Naviance and Common Application account, you'll see the full list of colleges right here you can add to your list at any point, students. The list of schools you have in the common application today might not be the final list, and that's okay. Even after you match your Naviance and common App accounts, you can still add schools. You can take things off. That's completely up to you. You build this the way you feel comfortable with a list of schools that give you options and choices that you really feel good about. So nothing is, is set in stone, right? You apply to your colleges one at a time even with the common application. You don't click a button and spend $1,000 in application fees. No, 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 no. You do this one at a time. And you apply when you're ready. You apply when all the pieces on your end are set to go. Now, some colleges have what we call supplemental essays. And that's in addition to the main college essay. I'm just gonna actually go back a few slides just to show you. If you've been on the Common App, moms and dads, um, you'll have seen that there's a couple of different tabs on the, on the screen. We've got the dashboard, My Colleges, Common App, College Search, and Financial Aid Resources. So I'm saying to students, you know, listen, 
First off, let's check and make sure all your schools are on the Common App. And if they are, let's add them. You can't add more than 20. Not that I suggest anybody apply to 20 schools. But um, by adding your schools to the Common Application, you can really start to keep track of deadlines, requirements, application fees, recommendation allotments, et cetera. Just because you have a school listed here, it doesn't mean you have to apply to that school. So eventually, you build a queue of colleges. So you see right here, I'm on the My Colleges tab. And in this account, we've got maybe six schools or so. Each school, in addition to the main Common App, that's in the middle tab, that's where you put your essay and your list of activities and whatnot, each school will have their own questions. And this is where you say, I'm applying regular decision, I'm applying early action. This is where you're going to see institutional questions specific to the college. Why are you applying to our school, et cetera. And this is also the page where you will actually submit that application. So my advice is throw in all the schools you're thinking about right now. Because rather than going from website to website to website, when does Sacred Heart do? When does Albany do? When does Elon do? If you put everything in the Common App, you'll see it right in front of you, and it just will help with your organization and make things a whole lot easier for you. Now, in Naviance, we are also going to be requesting letters of recommendation. So packet, a handy packet right here. I've got a copy of a recommendation request form that the students will provide their teachers. And on the reverse of this form, I'm going to talk about how to request these letters of recommendation through Naviance. So the teachers, many of them received a heads up from students last year. That was kind of the way we were, we were trying to go about this. Have a conversation with teachers last year. Get the, get the thumbs up that they're willing to write this letter. And this year, we're going to kick it up a notch. We're going to communicate with those teachers again, make sure they're still on board. And then the student's going to send a Naviance link. So teacher letters are submitted electronically. They are writing letters for you in a general fashion, meaning only it's not college specific. They're not writing a letter that's specific for Hofstra, specific for NYU. It's one letter specific about you, but that can be sent to multiple colleges. Teachers need some time to write these letters. So seniors, please reach out to them as soon as possible. The teachers are going to have to, um, like I said, submit their letters through Naviance. They will go directly from a teacher Naviance account to the colleges. Some teachers may ask for additional information. So they may ask for a student to fill out a brag sheet. I have brag sheets in my office. They're also posted on the college office classroom. And this would be a way a student could share with the teacher some of the reasons why they're asking that person to write the letter. What did you find um, exciting about the classwork? Was there something that was particularly challenging? Uh, was there a moment in class where you had that light bulb moment? You know, things to kind of help jog the teacher's memory. They're teaching hundreds of students a year. So a, a brag sheet might be helpful for them, but up to the teacher if they want that. And you can find those, again, in my office or in the college office classroom. As I said, I also write letters of recommendation. So my job is to really sort of pull all the pieces together to help the colleges get to know students, not only on an academic level, but also on a personal level. So hence that packet our many conversations and opportunities to communicate. It's very important in helping me present you to your colleges. When a student is following the directions to request the letters of recommendation, this is the screen they're going to come to on Naviance. And so it really is self-explanatory. You're going to see their drop-down menus, a list of all the Huntington High School teachers. You're going to see right here the colleges that are listed in the Student Naviance account, and the recommendation requirements. So you might see that one college allows up to three letters of recommendation, another doesn't take any. Depends on the schools. So again, putting all your schools in Naviance will help you really keep track of all of these little details as well. But again, a teacher cannot send a letter of recommendation unless they get that link. So really important. You know, as, as is, you know, we keep going back to communication and follow through. Touching base with your teachers, touching base with me, letting me know what's going on. If you're having any questions, any concerns, um, we are there to guide you through each step of this process. Your teachers want to help you as much as they possibly can, but 
they don't know what's going on in your little heads, so you have to make sure that you're reaching out to them and letting them know what's happening on your side. If you've you got a deadline coming up, if you're just concerned about something, et cetera. What you'll see after a teacher submits a letter of recommendation on Naviance, you'll see a status change in this section of Naviance. So you'll actually be able to see when those transcripts were submitted, when they were received by the college, and then when they were downloaded by the college. You'll also be able to see that when your transcripts have been sent out. And we'll talk about transcript submission in a second. But Naviance is how you're going to keep track of all of this, OK? Now, I'll talk about test optional in, in a second. But I did want to just share with you that for students who are applying with test scores to be considered, the large majority of colleges do not require students to actually pay to have score reports sent at this juncture. Many, many colleges are comfortable, prefer actually, if you self-report the scores on the application portals. So that would be on the common application in the testing section, or that might be on an institutional application, like say if someone's applying to UCLA or say Hunter College. Those two systems, the UC system and the CUNY system, they don't participate in the Common App. So on their portal, a student would plug all this information in. But certainly, you want to check with your colleges first to make sure that that, that is the appropriate way of, of, of sharing information, of posting that info. You can find that on the college applications, on their websites, how they prefer to get this information. But that then brings us to, well, what should I do? Should I send over some scores or not? The majority of students have taken at least one SAT, maybe even a, an ACT. And that's you know, really common practice still. Because we want to be able to take a look at those scores and determine, are they going to be in a student's best interest? And that could be different from college to college. There are some schools that require SATs and ACTs. Some schools that require them not for general admission, but for perhaps scholarship purposes, or for some maybe special programs that a college has, uh, combined uh, bachelor's, master's programs, et cetera. We've got some schools that are test blind. That means don't send us your scores at all. We're not going to look at them. Don't even bother. And then test flexible, which allows students to send over their best scores, whatever scores they want. Maybe it's AP scores instead of SAT scores. Uh, maybe it's ACT instead of SAT and so on. So every school has a bit of a, uh, of a different policy in place. And it's really important that you take a look at your your package, your scores, take a look at what the college is posting, what they're looking for, to see where you fall. Are you within the middle range? Are you above? Are you below? So if you'll just indulge me for a second, I want to read out something to you. Uh, and this is from Hofstra. And you can find information like this on many college websites. OK, so, and this was just posted the other day. This is from Hofstra. We understand that SAT and ACT scores are not always a reflection of student ability, and so we are not requiring standardized test scores for students applying to Hofstra for full-time undergraduate admission. This provides you with the ability to decide for yourself how to best present your academic strengths and abilities to the admissions committee and allows you to decide whether or not the standardized test results accurately reflect your academic ability and potential. Some stats. 40% of students admitted to Hofstra for the fall 2022 semester submitted their test scores. 40%. The mid-range of admitted students submitting SAT scores is 1210 to 1400, with an average ACT equivalent of 26 to 32. If you do choose to submit SAT or ACT scores, we will super score all scores submitted. For those who choose not to submit SAT or ACT scores, their entire record will be, a part, will be part of a comprehensive and holistic review, with stronger emphasis placed on the high school transcript. Test scores are required for the following students. Students who are homeschooled during high school, 
applicants to Hofstra's direct entry dual degree program in physician assistant studies, the Hofstra 4 plus 4 program, BA uh, MD program, and students interested in applying for the Hofstra trustee scholarship. So yes, this is Hofstra, and every college at this point has been dealing with COVID ramifications and testing and whatnot. If you dig, you will find this information. I shouldn't even say dig. It's posted. It's available. When you're having conversations with admissions counselors, whether it's a virtual college visit after school, the ones that we're hosting, if it's the mini college fair that we have on October 18th, if it's your visit to Indiana University, you want to ask these questions. It's entirely possible that a student sends their test scores to all the colleges on their list. It's entirely possible that a student leaves their scores off for all schools. And it's possible that we have a student that sends scores to some colleges and not all. So you kind of want to take a look and see, like we did with Hofstra, what that, what that criteria, what that package really looks like. And that's where we say, talk to the admissions counselors. Out of all the students in this room, no one's going to have the exact same college list. No one's going to have the exact same transcript or test scores or list of activities or college essays. So you want to go to the source. You want to talk to those admissions counselors. You want to make a decision that you can feel comfortable with. Now, I do want to touch a little bit upon a couple of our home systems here that we all know about. We've got the SUNY and the CUNY system. The SUNY system, as we know, 64 campuses spread all over the state of New York. All schools can be applied to, all SUNY schools can be applied to through the common application with the exception of the two-year schools. So a student who's thinking about applying to Binghamton, remember, you have a choice. You can apply through the common application, the coalition application, or the SUNY application. No brownie points for applying through SUNY. You can apply through the common application that works just as good. We've got here their testing uh, requirements as well. Various deadlines, there's varying levels of selectivity within the SUNY system as well. We've got our big research universities, University of Buffalo, Albany, Stony Brook, Binghamton. We've got our mid-sized liberal arts colleges, our two-year schools as well. So really within SUNY, as they say, there's something for everyone. We've got our CUNY system located within the five boroughs. So great schools there as well. Uh, the CUNY system, though, does not use the common application. And so if a student is thinking about applying to any of those schools, um, any of the senior colleges, the two-year schools, you're applying to those colleges through the CUNY website. CUNY does have a special honors program. It's called the Macaulay Honors Program. Um, a lot of great perks, including free tuition um, and a couple other great features there. Uh, there is an actual deadline for the Macaulay Honors Program, um, and that is going to be November uh, 16th, so it's coming up pretty soon. So students, if you're thinking about applying to the Macaulay Program, you're going to want to make sure you get on that as soon as possible. Now, as students are getting closer to finalizing their list, and it's about go time, that's when a student would bring me what we call the records release form. And so if you flip back two pages in the packet, I've got an example for you right here. The records release form is how students will say to me, Mrs. Walsh, I'm ready to apply to Sacred Heart University. I'm ready to apply to University of Florida, wherever it is. Students are going to tell me the name of the school. They're going to tell me how they're applying. They're going to tell me if they're applying to a particular program on campus, uh, if they're applying with a particular major or whatnot. And this is just, you know, just information for, for our records. So we can, again, keep accurate track of admissions trends and data, like Mrs. Alamillo was saying. Need to know what the deadline is. Need to know how you're applying, because if you're applying through the common application, there are special forms I have to fill out in addition to writing my letter of recommendation. If you're applying through the SUNY application, there are special forms I have to fill out that way. So you're going to let me know how you're applying. The next couple of questions are going to pertain to Naviance, student signs, parent signs, and then this is turned into me. Now on the reverse, I don't know if you saw this before, all the way at the bottom, there's some deadlines. There are 317 seniors, and that's a lot of paperwork to process. I need to be sure that every student who is applying has the attention they need and they deserve with the applications. So if there is a problem, 
I need to make sure I've got a little bit of a buffer to address that. So I'm asking students to give me these forms 15 school days before the deadline. Does that mean you have to apply 15 school days before deadline? No, 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 no. You have until October 15th, November 1st, January 1st, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever your deadline is, you have until then to apply. I just need to know about it. If Mr. Donovan is having a, a, a tough time with Naviance, if your transcript needs to be updated, there's, some, there's a question, I, I, can't, I can't address that eighth period, the day before it, the deadline. So I need to know what's going on with, with plenty of notice. So what I was telling the students in class this week is go down to the college office, grab a stack of these, and just bring them home. Leave them at home. And so when you're ready to start applying and get a move on with the paperwork, you can start to fill these out and you can bring them in to me the next day. Students can bring these to me as a stack with 10 schools one, or one school. You can bring them in a, a few at a time. It's completely up to you. If you want to bring me a form for a college that has a January deadline, that's fine. It's completely up to you. Now, if you bring me a form and you wind up not applying to that college, that's okay. Your application is the most important part. If you never apply, your transcript never gets there, so don't worry. Naviance has a special way of matching everything up. So if you apply, your transcript's going to go. If you don't apply, your transcript's not going to go anywhere, so you don't have to worry about that. But come down to the college office, students and parents, guardians, tell your kids, come down tomorrow. <laughs> Mrs. Catalano just made a big stack of these and grab a few. These can be printed off the college office classroom as well, so you can always grab them that way. They can be submitted to me electronically, so I'm not so good with using Cami, but I know all the students are. So you can edit them, you put in as much information um, as I'm asking for, and you can email those to me. That's fine as well. You can take pictures and scan them to me. I don't care how I get them as long as I get them, because I do need your permission, students and parents, guardians, to then send out that transcript that you have already approved. Okay, so this is how I know it's go time. And when I get this, my next step is to go on to Naviance. Are right, all these colleges listed? Do we have an approved transcript? This is my way of knowing that it's time for me to also get my letter of recommendation ready for you. Okay, you're not requesting a recommendation letter from me. It's automatic. So you'll not, you won't find my name in the Naviance request. When you give this to me, that's how I know. And these are you know, certainly being prioritized. There are some students that have October 15th deadlines. Maybe some of you in here have an October 15th deadline. But even if you have later deadlines, try and get started on this sooner than later. Senior year is a lot of fun. The bonfire is coming up. Homecoming is coming up. There's a lot of great activities for you to be involved in. I'm telling you, you don't want your parents saying to you, you can't go out tonight because you've got to write your college essay. Got to work on the common app. I know what's going to happen, but try and be proactive. Um, you know, these are all little things that you can work on little by little that add up to this big, big application that's ready to go. So take your time, but do work diligently, okay? And know that, again, I can't send anything out for you unless I get this release form, okay? So you apply to your colleges, and if you apply in the fall through an early program, you will find out if you've been admitted or not or deferred sometime around the end of December. If you've been admitted through an early action program or a single choice early action program or a rolling admission program, that means you can kind of sit on that. You've got that acceptance. You can wait until May 1st. If you've been accepted through an early decision program, remember that's the contract. So you're going to be sending over a, uh, a deposit within 10 days or so. Oh, no, okay. So how do the colleges notify you? Well, here's what's going to happen. Once you apply, students are going to receive an email from the college saying, thank you so much for applying to Binghamton University. We have received your application. Create an account on our website. Students are going to be asked to create their own portal accounts on those college application, on those college websites. And that's how students are going to keep track of materials that are, are, are required. That's how they receive their admissions decisions. That could be where a college says, 
we're deferring you for now, but please send us your first semester grades. So the communication then really is, 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 is done with common applications, kind of done with Naviance. Now it's between the student and the college through the portals. So students are gonna find out typically through the portal. Yes, there are, there are colleges that still send big envelopes and little envelopes, uh, but the majority of schools have actually posted on their websites the dates that they're gonna release their decisions. So you'll know with plenty of time to spare what day that's going to be. Is it December 15th? Is it December 20th? What have you. Again, for all those non-early decision students, you have until May 1st, so we've got time. But you do want to start this process earlier than later so that you're not rushed. And the same is true for the financial aid process. So many of you have, have heard of this before. As I'm walking into the English classes, I'm asking everybody, do you want to pay for a place for college? And they're like, no, no, but well, how do we do this? We do this by applying for financial aid, scholarships, grants. And so the three biggies for financial aid would be the FAFSA, the New York State TAP application, and the CSS profile. And these are forms that some students fill out for all of their colleges, some of their colleges. It really depends on the schools you're applying to. The FAFSA, though, is a form that's filled out by students who are applying to any college in the US or international American colleges. And this form helps the schools distribute their federal money. This application becomes available October 1st. The TAP application is for New York State students who will be attending college in New York. Could be a private school, could be a public school. Any college in New York, that's where the TAP works. That application is also available October 1st, but you have to have the FAFSA done first. And last but not least is going to be the CSS profile. And this is a form used mainly by the very selective colleges and universities to distribute their own institutional aid. So it has nothing to do with the federal money, with the state money. This is all the money that they've received from uh, their alumni who give back, endowments and things like that. So there are gonna be students who fill out all three. So for instance, uh, a student who's applying to NYU would fill out the FAFSA, because it's in the United States, the TAP, it's a New York State school, and the CSS profile because NYU is a highly selective private university that distributes their own institutional aid that way. A student who's applying to Binghamton will fill out the FAFSA and the TAP, no CSS there. A student who's applying to, say, Penn State will only fill out the FAFSA. They do not take the TAP because they're in Pennsylvania, and this is not a highly selective private school. Selective, yes, but not private. Uh, so you wouldn't be filling out the CSS profile. So it does depend on the schools you're applying to, which forms are filled out. We are gonna be hosting financial aid nights in October. These forms become available October 1st, and on October 6th, we're gonna be hosting an event uh, led by financial aid counselors to discuss these forms, what they mean, how to fill them out, you know, different, different um, hints, tips, and suggestions. We are also going to be hosting FAFSA completion night on, on November 2nd, and this is where we're going to have financial aid counselors go line by line through the FAFSA. I was telling the students in class uh, this week, October 1st is the magic day from when these forms are released. You cannot create any accounts right now. If you, if you try to create an account for the FAFSA right now, you're working off the wrong school year. This would be, what's, what's available right now is for students who are in college for the 2022-23 school year. Your freshman year will be 2023-24. So October 1st, that becomes available. Now, there was a question in class today, well, should I get this, this FAFSA and CSS and everything done as soon as possible? Well, yes, as soon as possible, but that doesn't mean you have to have it done by October 2nd. As soon as possible. The idea is, you wanna to apply to your schools get an acceptance letter, and shortly after that, receive your financial aid package. You just don't want this big delay between, all right, I know I can, I, I've been admitted to Hofstra, but is it affordable for me now? So if you apply for college and financial aid around the same time, there's a greater likelihood that you'll be able to receive both an acceptance and a financial aid package around the same time. And that's, that's what we were looking for. Colleges may have their own deadlines for these forms though, so again, you wanna take a look at that and be sure that you're adhering to all that. Uh, there's no infinite pot of money, we all know that, uh, especially here in the state. So you do wanna make sure you get on this, you know, as soon as you can, but please don't stress that you have to get this done right now. 
you can submit financial aid applications before you apply to your colleges. You can do that. What will happen is, it'll just really sit there. Once you are accepted though, that's when the uh, admissions department will talk to the financial aid department and say, we accepted so and so, do you have a FAFSA and a CSS and a tap on file? Oh yes, we do, okay, let's put together that package. So we just don't wanna have this big giant delay in between. Scholarships are a whole nother part of this process. And there are institutional scholarships where Hofstra, you know, has, we've got this trustee scholarship, I think that was what I mentioned before. Um, money that the college could award a student based off of all different sorts of factors, maybe based off of grades, could be based off of involvement in a music program in high school, maybe it's scholarships for students who are highly involved in community service opportunities, things like that. So we call those merit scholarships that can be distributed in kind of one of, one of two ways. Sometimes a college will send out an acceptance letter, congratulations, you've been admitted to our school, we'd like to offer you the Dean's Scholarship of $10,000 a year. And you didn't have to do anything else, you just had to apply. But there are other scholarships where there might be a separate application. So you do want to look on the college websites to be sure, is there something else I need to do? Do I need to write another essay? And if that's a matter of writing an essay or $5,000, then you write that essay. Uh, maybe there's nothing you have to do. Maybe the college just simply reviews every student equally for scholarship consideration. But be, be sure you look into that. There are tons of New York State scholarships that are not tied to financial aid. On the college office classroom, in the Friday Flyer, we have a list of all that information. You can simply go onto this website also, hesk.ny.gov, and take a look. Um, scholarships for students going into certain majors, scholarships for students with different uh, family situations, and things like that. Um, certainly, there are private scholarships through religious organizations. Many of, uh, of, uh, of your parents, your employers may have scholarship, uh, uh, scholarships available. Uh, perhaps your union does as well. Uh, Definitely take a look and see what opportunities you might be able to provide your kids with. Many of these scholarship applications require transcripts, which I can certainly handle for you. Many of them will require letters of recommendation, which I can handle as well. Um, as you start to dig into that scholarship process, you're going to see that we have a really great scholarship coordinator here too. That's Ms. Bonilla. Uh, she may actually be the counselor for some of you students here. And she maintains a bulletin uh, that is posted quarterly we put it onto the guidance website. We put it onto the college office classroom. We have hard copies everywhere. And this is where we're advertising some of the um, scholarships that our students may be eligible for. There's a Burger King scholarship, Coca-Cola scholarship, you name it. Uh, I will put a little plug in here for Naviance. Naviance has a really, really nice national scholarship search component. Uh, that's gonna be in the colleges tab, students. So you can log in, scroll down to scholarships and money, and you will find that, that link. It's where you put in um, kind of your personal profile, answer a lot, a lot of different questions. And then the database will narrow down scholarships that you could potentially be eligible for. Doesn't mean you're eligible for every single one of them, but it looks like it could be a good shot for you. So you take a look and you see. And if there's a way to bring down that total price tag, we wanna do that. We really wanna do that because for so many students now, the bachelor's degree is the minimum, right? We're looking at a lot of careers where advanced work is, is required, is required. So thinking about long-term planning, I think, I think is important. And if there's any way that we can reduce the cost of the undergraduate, we wanna do that. You know, maybe even if that's, um, you know, uh, looking into uh, switching, from, switching gears from college application to scholarship applications, you know, it becomes the 10th the period of the day. But we're here to help you out with that, and it's a, it's a big, big process. We do have the guidebooks, you know, the big fan guidebooks, and the college office, but, uh, you know, I do find that the, with the National Scholarship Search and looking through the scholarship bulletin from Ms. Bonilla, you'll have everything that you need. You just got to really be diligent about it. We have certainly some special considerations for some students who are considering maybe going into portfolio-based programs. We have our student athletes, students who are looking for support services in college. Every student's path is unique. Every student's path is different. No two students are the same. No two colleges are the same. So what's right for me might not be right for one of my kids. So I'm not gonna force that on her. 
We want to make sure that we're taking an individualized approach to every student. So, you know, when you're filling out that packet and we're having our conversations, I need to know what's going on so I can say, why don't you think about this program? Maybe this will work well for you. Let's talk about deadlines for portfolios. You know, how does that work from college to college to college? So we're going to customize this process because, again, we appreciate that every child is coming in with different needs and different uh, hopes and dreams and plans. So your process should be as unique as you are. I'm going to be setting up shop next week in the library, a couple of periods a day. Um, I'm going to be meeting with students on a drop-in basis, so this is not really one-on-one -on -one unless there's only one student who shows up, period one. Um, but I'm going to be working with students in a group setting on common application, Naviance, uh, requesting teacher letters of recommendation. Uh, we're not so much going to be able to talk about narrowing down your list, that's really something we're going to talk about together, but if students, if you're looking for a place to work to ask a few questions, to just have somebody over your shoulder making sure everything's going the way it's supposed to, please make sure you stop by. So the next couple of days, every, every period is accounted for. Be sure you come in. I can't give you a pass out of your English class to do this. So make sure you're coming down during special attendance or during lunch period or study hall, and I'll be there for you throughout the week, okay? Um, so I hope that you feel a little bit better than you did when you walked in. And I really hope I didn't overwhelm anybody and you need to go home and just like pass out. <laughs> but I do want to let you know that, again, my office is, is, is really an open door policy. Yes, I may have appointments, but Mrs. Catalano, she's, she's fantastic. She sits at that front desk and she can answer questions. And if she can't, she's going to say, come on back, I'll talk to Mrs. Walsh first. Um, parents, if you call, She's going to ask, you know, how can I help you if I'm in a meeting? Um, she's a great resource, too. So if you can't reach me, talk to her, too. Um, but she's always there. And if you need to sit and work, if you need just a quiet space to kind of get your thoughts together with, all right, well, how am I going to structure this college essay? Or what should I really think about with a supplement? You can do that in the college office. In terms of essay writing and supplements, I read essays all the time. So if anybody wants to run an essay by me, that's fine. I know that many, if not all, English teachers are working on the college essay right now. And so you're receiving some feedback in class at this point about what you're working on. And um, I know, for instance, um, uh, I was in Ms. Geyer's class um, yesterday. She was talking about putting together um, graphic organizers with the college essay. So, so this, is, this is happening here. But don't let it just happen here. All right, we want to take this information, we want to go home, we want to get cracking on that common application, we want to really start to dig into how do I want to structure the activity list that I've put together. Well, I want to look at my list of colleges and do I have enough options here for me? Is my list represent some big schools, some small schools, some schools that are closer to home, some schools that are further away, some choices. Again, sitting at that dining room table saying I feel good about my choice, that's the goal. So I thank you for coming. And if anybody has questions, we'll make this an open Q&A. Wow. Here we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. So let's see if I can let me go back a few. No? Okay, there we go. All right, so first off, not every school will have all these options, right? You want to take a look at the college you're applying to see what plans even exist. When a school has an early application, though, you're applying typically anywhere between October 15th and November 15th, and the message you're sending to your college is that you're a highly motivated student. You're someone who has taken the time, put the energy and the effort into crafting a perfect essay you know, for you, that you've taken the time to do the research, you've taken the time to, to visit, whether it's virtual or in person. And so you're sending that strong message that you are someone who feels that they could be a good fit for this college. Now with early decision, you are saying, you are my number one choice, my number one choice. I'm not thinking about anybody else as much as I am with you. If you accept me, I'm going to go there. So colleges look at that as the ultimate commitment. And when they see that, you know, they really, they know that they're getting someone who, above all else, wants to be there. Sometimes you will see 
higher admissions rates for early programs. Sometimes, that's not always the case. It's not always the case. So you have to take a look at the, the stats on the college's websites, but for a student who is highly motivated, who has taken the time over the summer to really work on every little piece of this application, that essay is finished, they've communicated, they have researched backwards, forwards, and inside out, applying early action, I believe, gives them a better advantage. Now, this can be different from school to school, and there may not be an advantage in applying early. The acceptance rate could be exactly the same from regular to early. That can happen, that can happen. But then again, if you're someone who is done, wants to get this over with, applying early action, if everything is perfect, makes sense. If it's a struggle, if it's a push to get everything done by October 15th, don't send your, your work at 80%. Wait until you're in good shape. That's what I would say. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So what happens? Okay. So that's a good question, and I think a lot of families are, are considering. Well, what do I do? I mean, you know, college is really expensive, and 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 how are we gonna, you know, how do we want we want to we want to give our our child the best advantage, and if applying early decision means 17% versus seven. Wow, it sounds, it sounds very tempting. So the first thing I would do is know that on every college website, typically in the financial aid section, there's something called the net price calculator. And the net price calculator is an online tool where you can plug in your, your family information, your financial information. Also, there's going to be questions that are sort of... Uh, based on merit scholarships, so academics and things like that are plugged in also. So it's meant to give families an early read of how much financial aid that student could be eligible for at that college. So before anybody applies early decision, you really want to take a look at that. Now, when you are applying early decision, again, you're making this, 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 this commitment right off the bat. There's an agreement that the student signs that I sign and that the parent signs, that we are all in, in agreement here that if you are admitted, you'll withdraw all your other active applications. Students have usually about 10 days or so to put down that, that freshman deposit. So the college does expect that before you say, I can come here, you've thoroughly researched what type of a package you might receive through using that net price calculator. But at the end of the day, Colleges aren't going to you know, strong arm you and make you go there if you sign an early decision agreement. Like, if there's a financial concern, you want to discuss it with the financial aid office first, but know that if a student's been admitted, I can't send out any documents to any subsequent colleges. Unless a student's been released from an early decision agreement, that's the only way I can do that. So, it sounds super tempting, and there are a lot of students who do apply early decision, you know, worldwide. At most high schools, it's actually a small fraction. Simply, you know, it's expensive, but also teenagers change their minds, right? I mean, you're changing your sneakers like all the time. So, um, to make that big decision so early in senior year, for most students, it's, it's just not their gig. Early action, that's a nice way to go. That's non-binding. That offers you a lot of flexibility, a lot of opportunity to kind of do some more research and figure out, is this going to be the right place for me for my four years? If I, um, you know, if I wind up at such and such college, am I going to have the chance to grow and learn and try new things and have different experiences and opportunities? If I start off with one major, can I change my mind later on down the road? So you're not stuck. You're not stuck. And for some students, it doesn't feel like you're stuck when you apply early decision because it, it's right for them, you know? And, and they've, they've looked at all the different kind of scenarios and it, it works for their family. But ultimately, anybody considering applying early decision, you do want to take a look into the net price calculator, have a conversation with admissions counselors, take a look at the admission stats, you know, and, and see really how it works best for, best for you. Yes? Yes. Yes. The virtual college visits are only for Huntington High School students. So we've got 
maybe 60 or so colleges signed up and uh, more coming every day. You know, as I was starting these presentations with the students this week, uh, you know, on Monday I was showing them the list of colleges. By Tuesday it was bigger, Wednesday it was bigger and bigger. So we have colleges reaching out all the time. You know, and I'm saying to the students, look, if you want to apply to University of Miami, but we all know it's kind of tough to just you know, hop on Southwest and get to Miami tomorrow, Go to the virtual visit. What a great way to get some information and learn about the colleges. Um, the nice thing also is that the admissions counselors who host those events are typically the admissions counselors who read our applications. So what a great way to make a connection, right? This is, this is, a, a, this is a process of networking. I hate to say college is a business, but moms and dads, you know this. So we want to make sure that we are making ourselves marketable applicants and communicating, asking questions, demonstrating our interest, even if it's through a Zoom meeting, still counts. And you had another question? Okay, so waitlisting can happen at the end of the, end of the road. Students can be Accepted, denied, deferred during an early round, and a deferral basically means that the college likes what they see, but they need a little bit more information, so they might ask for a first semester report card, then they look at your application again. A wait list means that they like you, they have no room. And when students are waitlisted, they are notified typically in April or so, maybe early April, and basically their name is put on a list. And the students usually will receive some notification from the college that will say, would you like to stay on our wait list? You know, click yes, click no. Um, and then they'll let them know what sort of the time frame looks like. Students who are waitlisted will likely not find out if they are taken off the wait list until way after the May 1st deadline. Could be May 15th could be June 1st. I've had students taken off wait lists in July. It all depends on how many students put down a freshman deposit. So again, college is a business. If they're looking to bring in a freshman class of 5,000 students and they have 4,500 students enrolled by May 1st, well, then they're not going to go to their wait list and say, all right, where can we get some more students? Where can we get them from? Um, when a student is waitlisted, we have to we take a look at those schools. We kind of see what college they've been accepted to. Students going to have to put down a deposit at another school. We hope that they'll be taken off a wait list, but that might not ever be the case. But in the meantime, we can pursue, the, pursue those colleges. We can send additional information. We can send a third quarter report card. We can send letters of support. Maybe it's your favorite school that you've been waitlisted from. We're going to keep working with that school to see what else it is that we can do to help move that application along the way, and hopefully the student has more consideration. However, not every college will rank their wait lists. It might be random. It might be looking to fill certain slots, certain majors, things like that, and we are not privy to any of that information. So that's why I say to students, listen, I know, you, I know this is your top choice, but you gotta put a deposit down somewhere else because you gotta have a place, gotta have a place. So I hope that answers your question. Yes? More than likely, yes. We're, we're not so sure yet if it's going to be in person or, or, or virtual just yet. But I would say more than likely, yes, we'll have recordings. Yes? If any, right, um, if any. The common application will have a place on it for students to put in parent information. It's gonna ask uh, if your parents went, went to college and when they graduated, et cetera. Some colleges in the My Colleges section will actually ask if you've graduated from our school, if you're an alumnus, what year did you graduate? You know, when a college is, is looking at applications, um, student A, student B, they're exactly the same, and one student has legacy status versus the other, maybe they give that student the nod. But it's typically, it's not one of these big ticket items anymore the way it used to be, but that depends on the college, you know, for sure. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on it, I wouldn't, for anybody, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put all my eggs in that basket, 
It could be a factor, but nine times out of 10 is not one of the most, the, 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 the biggest. The transcript is always the most important factor. Yes. No, 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 okay. So, students have until their deadlines to apply. I just need to know about it beforehand. So all I need from students is this form. That's it. The teachers send their letters of recommendation through Naviance, and remember when that letter of recommendation request is sent through Naviance, Naviance will list the schools the student's applying to with the application deadline, so the teachers will know those deadlines as well. So the teacher forms, my forms, student application, as long as they are in by the deadline, you're good to go. But this form just gives me the heads up so that I can start preparing. If there's an issue, there's a problem with the transcript or there's, again, like I said, a teacher is having a tough time with Naviance. I want a, a bit of a buffer so I can take care of any potential issues. Not that I'm expecting any, but take care of things if they come up. So no, students do not have to apply by Tuesday. <laughs> I just need to know about it. That's all. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no problem. Um, again, and that's why a student can give me these forms for colleges with January deadlines also. It's fine. It's fine. I, I, can, I can accept all of these at this point. I'm just saying to the student, don't give these to me, you know, eighth period the day before your deadline. Give me enough notice. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, so a student will actually take their transcript and plug in the courses one by one. The Common Application has a section called Courses and Grades, and if you've bounced around on Common App, you've seen this before. Some colleges ask students to fill out that section, but not all. Uh, I'm saying students don't fill it out unless you have to. Uh, you'll have to put in the names of the schools you're applying to first in order to see if that, that, that particular section is required, uh, but that is essentially self-reporting your transcript as well. But some colleges, when you apply and you receive an invitation to create an account on their portal where they say, here's the next steps, they may say, fill out this SRAR, this self-report your transcript, right here on our portal. So it's essentially taking your transcript line by line and plugging that information into their system. Oh, sure. If you click on colleges, and that's going to be on either the student side or the parent side, a drop-down menu will open up, and you'll see things like college I'm thinking about, college search, etc. You'll see a link that says scholarships and money. You click on that, and that's where you'll find the national scholarship search. So that's on Naviance. That's on Naviance. Yep. That's act the national scholarship search is right on Naviance. Yep. You can link into it right there. Yes. I recommend the Common Application. The SUNY application has two parts to it. The first part is very basic information, this, and then once that's submitted, you get access to a second part. To me, the Common Application has everything laid out for you right in front. So you'll see everything you need to do on one nice screen, whereas with SUNY, there's bouncing around back and forth, there's emails, it's a, it's a, a, a bit more involved. I'm gonna say Common Application. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. Not necessarily. So if a student knows who they want to ask, hopefully they've had a conversation already. If they've had the conversation already, they can absolutely go into Naviance and make that recommendation request. A teacher can't send that letter, of course, until their school is listed in Naviance, though. And so that letter would kind of sit in Naviance until the student added schools in. It could go either way. A student could put the schools into Naviance first, then they make the request. A student could make the request and then put the schools in. Either way works. It's just really about communicating. And 
if the student happens to put in the schools after the teacher puts the letter in, they'll just have to stop by the teacher's room and say, hey, you know, I just added my schools in, can you just go ahead and send that letter? I'll say, of course, no problem. So it's, 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 either way works. Students definitely are going to be responsible, though, for keeping track of all this, keeping on top of it, communicating with their teachers. Um, again, students will see right in Naviance when those letters were submitted, when they were downloaded and received by the college. So, it's, so you can keep track of everything through Naviance. So if a, if a student forgot to touch base with a teacher and say, oh, I added my list, my, my schools now, can you go in and submit your letter? They'll, 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 by checking their Naviance account, they'll see that letter didn't go out yet. So that's when they just talk to the teacher and it's a simple process. Teacher just click submit and there you go. So either way works. Okay. Yes? Correct. Okay, so if a college only requests one letter of recommendation, they're referring to a teacher letter with that situation. My letter is a constant. That's going to go everywhere. When they say one letter, and you'll see, let me flip this way. Okay, so this screen of Naviance actually will show you the list of schools that a student's applying to and how many recommendations are allowed and how many are required. So when they say one required, one allowed, that just means one teacher. So a student will have to be very particular about this process. On the reverse of that recommendation request form, it speaks about the differences between making a general request and a specific request. So if a student is making a general request, what they're basically saying is, I'm comfortable with your letter going to all the colleges on my list. They're making a specific request. This is the way a student is saying, I'd like your letter to go to this school, this school, this school, and this school. Now, we're doing this without seeing these letters. I don't see the letters. Students don't see the letters. This is, this is really confidential between the teacher and the college. But sometimes a student will pick the teacher that, is, that teaches within the discipline that maybe they want to major in, right? Or maybe the student picks the teacher that they have the strongest relationship with. They have the most growth and progress in that class, so they know that this teacher has an even better understanding of who they are, what kind of potential they can, you know, they have, et cetera. So that may be the case where if you can only have one letter sent over, you pick that particular teacher. And so you have to make a specific request. For some students, you're applying to colleges where all the letters you want can be sent to all your colleges. Some schools do have these, these requirements, though. Uh, you'll find some colleges won't accept any teacher letters. They don't want them. They don't need them. They won't read them. Um, but, again, putting all your schools into Common App and then matching with Naviance will just keep everything in, in, in one location so you've got it all at your fingertips. I, I know my deadline, here's my recommendation requirements, et cetera. So it'll be, it'll be pretty straightforward for you. Mm-hmm, yep, yep. So that's called super scoring. And is there a for that? no, no. So actually, when you're filling out the common application or any institutional application as well, the colleges are going to be asking you if you want to send your scores over to plug in your highest evidence-based reading and writing and the test date, your highest math and the test date, your highest ACT composite and the test date or, and all the subscores. So you're self-reporting the best. What will happen is the same way we would send a final transcript to verify everything you put on your self-reported transcript, you're going to be asked to send over an official school report from the college board. And that's where the college just will compare what you put on your application to the scores you actually earned. So yeah, it's called super scoring, and yes, they'll still do that. The score report that you'll eventually send will have all that information so the colleges can see, all right, here's my, my number for my evidence-based reading and writing, here's the math score, and we're good to go. No, the super score is common practice. Now, even the ACT now is becoming more common. Uh, ACT score reports, if you take them more than once, the second test will have the super score all, but all the way actually up at the top, which is kind of neat. They didn't have that a couple of years ago, so that's a cool new feature. Yes? Mm -hmm. 
Right. It depends on the scholarship. There, are, you know, we have a, a big scholarship awards night, as I'm sure you know, and some um, some scholarships are paid directly to the student, and uh, the student can use that for books and supplies and dorm, you know, things like that. And other scholarships money is paid directly to the college. So it really does depend on the award that's uh, that's uh, being distributed. So, we good. All right, everybody, now go home, get to work, keep me posted, always happy to help. Have a great night, everybody. What time is it? Oh my God, wow. Thank you so much, and please do not hesitate to ask us any questions, and good luck, have a great year.